Okay, so this is for anyone who needs a little bit of a reminder of how to graph rational functions. Because I know it was a little while ago. Uh, so we're going to start with the ones that are on the practice quiz and the practice test. The first one is number four. And that one's given by f of x equals um, 1 over x squared minus 9. Alright, and here's our our list of steps that we're going to follow in uh, in our problems here. So the first one is a vertical asymptote. And remember, for the vertical asymptote, remember what a vertical asymptote is telling us. So we'll put a graph over here. Uh, a vertical asymptote is this this dotted line that goes up and down, and it says stay away from this x value. This x value is off limits. If you put x, you know, this value, say it's negative two or something. If you put that into the function, you're going to get a problem. Uh, and the only problem that you could create in this function, uh, since this function is a fraction, the only problem would be if the denominator were a zero. So if we say, what if the denominator is zero? We don't want that to happen. So we've got to make sure that we know what values of x to stay away from. So we'll solve for x as a quadratic. It's a difference of squares. So you can factor it just like this which means that x could be negative 3 or x could be positive 3. So at negative 3 and positive 3 we're saying x can't be those things. So that's why we put a vertical asymptote. We remind ourselves on the picture of this function, that's what the graph is, just a picture of the function, we're reminding ourselves to stay away from those x values. Um, next we'll look at the horizontal asymptote. Okay, the horizontal asymptote could also be called the end behavior. And that's important that you remember that those are synonymous. End behavior implies that you're at the ends. A common mistake to make is that uh, you say, well, you can't cross the horizontal asymptote, so you don't cross it in the middle. But in the middle, you might cross the asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is about the ends. It's not middle behavior, it's end behavior. And the reason we call it end behavior is because the horizontal asymptote tells us what happens on the ends. And on the ends, way out here, and way out here, we're talking about really big values of x. As we go further this way, x gets really big. So we think, what happens to this function, what's the y value, when x gets really big? And that, if you remember, that's when we compare the bigness of the numerator to the bigness of the denominator. And that comes down to, what's the biggest power of x? If uh, if this has a, uh, no x's, so it's just a 1 over x squared, and you let x be really big, like a million, then 1 divided by a million squared, minus 9, uh, so 999,991, that's going to be a really small number. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. Right? So it's really like the biggest thing in the numerator is 1, versus the biggest thing in the denominator is x squared. And there's, there's other stuff here, but it, when x is so big, this other stuff's not really going to affect it. So this will tend to go to 0. So our end behavior, our horizontal asymptote, will be this y equals 0. So let's grab a, another color. And at the x-axis, our y equals 0, we'll put a little dot reminding us that on the ends, the graph is going to get close to 0. All right, now, next. The third one is to find some x-intercepts. Okay, What is an x-intercept? It's a dot, a point on the x-axis. And for all x-intercepts, uh, y is equal to 0. Um, so if we just say, well, if this equals 0, since whatever we put in for x will give us a y, then if we set this whole thing to 0 and, and find out what causes it to be 0, what x value causes it to be 0, then we'll know what the x-intercepts are. But if you take this and set it equal to 0, um, what you'll find every time you do a fraction, if you want to find out what's going to cause this to be 0, it doesn't matter what's in the denominator. If your numerator is 0, then, um, then the whole thing is going to be 0. So let me back this up. So for x-intercepts, you just set the numerator, numerator 
equal to 0. Because if the numerator is equal to 0, the whole fraction is going to be equal to 0, and you're going to be at an x-intercept. So set the numerator equal to 0. When will 1 be 0? Never. That can never be true. So there's no x-intercepts. Okay. Okay, so, sorry, I had to step away for a second. So, um, there we go, step one, two, three. We found all of the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote, and the x-intercepts. So the last thing would be to plot points. And we don't want to plot every single point in this graph. That would take us our entire lifetime. So we want to just plot some key points and connect them. So now that we have all this information, all we need to do, just as a reminder, is plot points that are between uh, vertical asymptotes, let's say, um, and or x-intercepts. So whether you're between two vertical asymptotes, or between two x-intercepts, or between a vertical asymptote and an x-intercept, you want to plot a point. So here we have uh, just two vertical asymptotes, so we're going to have one between. Uh, and on the outsides. Outsides. So this would be the outside, and that would be the outside. To the far left and the far right, beyond the far, farthest left vertical asymptote or x-intercept, and likewise for the right. Uh, so we want to plot a point here, and here, and here. Easiest way to organize that is the table of values. So we'll plot a point out here that would be at negative 4. That would probably be the easiest. And at 0, because that's in, the, in between these two, and 0 would be the easiest x value to plug in. And then we'll go 4. That's just beyond this vertical asymptote. So just real quickly, if uh, we take negative 4 and we square it, negative 4 squared would be positive 16. 16 minus 9 would be 7. Now if we put a 0 in there, I get 1 over negative 9, so it would be negative 1 ninth. We put a 4 in there, again it'll be positive 16 minus 9, and uh, so we'll get, oh, that'll be a 7, so actually it should be 1 7th. So, not 7, but 1 7th, and also here, 1 7th. So, at negative 4, we're going to plot 1 7th, that's really small, that's just up here. The, the most important thing is that we see it's above this x-axis, above the horizontal asymptote. A negative one ninth. That'll put us right in there somewhere. Let's grab actually red and make these easier to see. And then at four, we're gonna put a mark at one seventh. So now we have all the information that we need to graph this function. I'm gonna graph it in blue. We know that a vertical asymptote. Again, at the very beginning, we said that the, you cannot let the graph cross that vertical asymptote. It's a, a big stay away from here sign. That's what a vertical asymptote says. So as the graph comes towards this vertical asymptote, it's got to go down, it's got to go up. Could it go down? That's a question. It could go down, except no, it couldn't, because there's no x-intercept there. If it went from this positive y value down to negative y values, it would have to cross the x-axis and have an x-intercept, but we found that our, there aren't any. So it, it must go up here, go through this value, this point, and just keep going and approaching this horizontal asymptote and never quite get there. In the middle, uh, maybe it starts down here and goes up there, maybe it starts up here, goes down that way, or swoops like this, or maybe it makes a U shape down like that. Okay, But we can eliminate a lot of those, again, because there's no x-intercepts. Whatever we do, we know that we have to either go up or down at these vertical asymptotes, and we know we can't cross the x-intercept, or the, the x-axis. So nothing from up here, so none of this, none going down there, nothing swooping down like this. It must be, you know, it goes away from the x-axis, away from the x-axis. And I'm sure you can see by some similar reasoning over here, it would do a very similar thing to this because it can't cross the x-axis. All right. So that was the most complicated one on the practice test. And now we'll go back to some homework problems, just in case that wasn't enough. And we will start with number 15. Yeah, number 15 is a good one. Start with green here. So 
15 is y equals 2x over x squared minus 1. So we're going to follow those steps again, and I won't explain them again, uh, except for very briefly. So step one, vertical asymptote says don't go here. Don't let x be this thing. The only thing that x can't be is anything that causes the denominator to be 0. So we'll set the denominator equal to 0 and find out what those troubling x values are. So x squared equals 1, square root of x, or the square root of x equals the square root of 1, the square root of 1 would be plus or minus 1. So we will go onto the graph, and at positive 1 and negative 1, we'll put some vertical asymptotes. So here, and we'll throw a couple more tick marks on there, give us a scale. Step 2 would be a horizontal asymptote. So let's see what happens when we compare the numerator to the denominator. Um, the, the bigness of the numerator to the bigness of the denominator. Well, the biggest thing in the numerator is 2x. The biggest thing in the denominator is x squared. There is some more here. There's that minus 1, but we're talking about the ends. Remember, end behavior. So this will get to be approximately 0, really close to 0. So y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote for step 2. So, same as the previous one. There's our horizontal asymptote. Uh, step three is going to be finding those x-intercepts. And remember, if the numerator is equal to zero, doesn't matter what you're dividing by, the whole thing will be zero. Two x, if the numerator is equal to zero, then this will be zero, and that's what our x-intercepts are, the thing that causes y to be zero. This, when this y is zero, then we have an x-intercept. So if x is zero, you just solve for x. If x is zero, that's an x-intercept. So let's do x-intercepts like this, this color. Uh, zero right there. So there's an x-intercept. thing we need to do here is plot some points. So we need to pick some x values, get the uh, corresponding y values. Remember we said between any vertical asymptotes and or x-intercepts. So between this vertical asymptote and this x-intercept, and between this x-intercept and this vertical asymptote, those are the between ones, and then on the outside. So to the left of this vertical asymptote to the right of this one. So we'll pick a negative 2. And then between these two things, negative one half seems the most logical. Then positive one half. Then positive two. All right. So I'll try to do this kind of quickly. For negative two, two times negative two is negative four. And then negative two squared is four minus one. That'd be a three down here. So negative four thirds. With a negative one half, you got two times negative one half up here. That'd be a negative one. One half squared would be one fourth. One fourth minus one would be a negative three fourths. So you have a negative one over a negative three fourths. That's a positive four thirds. So we got a positive four thirds. Now with positive one half, everything's going to be the same except for. Uh, up top, we would actually wind up with a positive one, so then this would be a negative four thirds. And a positive two would be the same as when you put in, let's see, um, would it be the same? No, I don't think it would. So negative two, or positive two times positive two would be positive four, and then two squared would be four minus one, so that would be a positive four thirds. So we'll plot these points in red. Negative 2 comma negative 4 thirds. Here's negative 1. That's 3 thirds. And so negative 2 is so right around there. There's our negative 4 thirds. And then negative 1 half positive 4 thirds. Positive 1 half negative 4 thirds. Positive 2 positive 4 thirds. Now we have all the information that we need. What's this part of the graph going to do right here? Is it going to come from up here? No, there's no x-intercept there. Can't do that. 
So it must come from down here. Is it going to go over that that horizontal asymptote here in the middle? Which it, it could possibly, but it can't because there's no x-intercept. That's how we know that it doesn't do that. Not just because it's the horizontal asymptote. Uh, and here we can see it's got to go through this point. We can even just sketch this little middle piece. It's got to go through here and here and there. And since it couldn't possibly come back down because there's no x-intercept, it's just got to keep going up. And same here, it's got to keep going down. It doesn't cross over the x-intercept or the x-axis anymore. And very similar to that left side, this must go like that. Okay, we'll do one more. A slightly different case. 17, this will be a little bit of a, a different horizontal asymptote. f of x equals x squared minus 9 over 2x squared plus 1. All right, so we're going to find those vertical asymptotes. We're going to set the denominator equal to 0. 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. And so we'll subtract 1, 2x squared equals negative 1, we'll divide by 2, x squared equals negative 1 half, and x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 half. Well, we, we might wonder, what's the square root of 1 half? That's kind of a, a bummer of a number, but it's the square root of negative 1 half. What kind of a number is the square root of a negative? It's imaginary. And we only graph real numbers on this xy plane. So we don't have any vertical asymptotes to plot. So in that case, there's none, since we got the square root of a negative number. No real numbers there. Uh, two, we're going to graph the horizontal asymptote. All right. So we're going to compare the bigness of the numerator to the bigness of the denominator. The biggest thing in the numerator is x squared. That's the biggest exponent of x. And there's little stuff over there, but remember, it's not as influential when x gets really, really big. And down here, we got 2x squared. That's the biggest one. So, and, and all that stuff doesn't matter as much. So what's going to happen as x gets really large here? If, as x gets really large, it'll be like this x squared and x squared cancel each other out, and we're just left with a 1 over 2. So that would be a 1 half. So our horizontal asymptote will be a positive 1 half. So let's make that 1, so this will be about 1 half. And that's our vertical asymptote. And that's going to happen anytime the degrees are the same, it's going to be like they're canceling each other out, and we'll be just left with the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. Okay. X-intercepts next. Set the numerator equal to 0. X squared minus 9 equals 0. Uh, and it wouldn't take a whole lot of doing to find that X equals plus or minus 3. You get the square root of 9, and that'll be plus or minus 3. So our X-intercepts will be at plus or minus 3. Let's make some tick marks here so that we know where we are. Plus or minus 3 are our vertical, or not vertical asymptotes, our x-intercepts. All right. Step 4, we'll be plotting some points. You'll notice we only have x-intercepts, no vertical asymptotes, so we need between the vertical asymptotes and on the left and the right. So we will choose three x values, one here on the outside, one in between, one on the outside. So this is negative three, so we'll go one past there, we'll go negative four, we'll go in the middle to zero, and we'll go to the right at positive four. If we put a negative four in there, we will get 16 minus nine, that will be a seven. 16 minus nine will be seven over. Uh, 16, right, four squared will be 16 times two, that's 32 plus 1, so that's going to be 33. 7 over 33. Not very big. Uh, put a 0 in there. That's easy. Put a 0 there, and there, it's like those go away. That's why we pick 0 if we can. And we get negative 9 over 1, so that's negative 9. Uh, put a 4 in there, and it 2 will make the same thing as negative 4. They're the same because when you square negative 4, you get the positive 16s uh, there and there. So we will again get 7 over 33. We'll plot these in red. So at negative 4 and at positive 4, we're going to be at 7 thirty-thirds. Okay? The, the most important thing here is, is, like, is it above the x-axis? Where is it in relation to the, the horizontal asymptote? Horizontal asymptote is at 1 half. 7 thirty-thirds 
is definitely less than one half, right? You can just do a little estimation and figure that out. All right, so seven thirty thirds must be somewhere there, maybe right there, and at zero we should be at negative nine. Let's just go all the way down as far as we can inside the screen, and there we go. So now we'll plot all these points. Let's see. We know this is really clear here. Got to go from here through the x-intercept, down really steep to get down to that negative nine, get up here to the x-axis to cross that x-intercept, and then we know we should just get up really close to that horizontal asymptote. So it was a little different, no vertical asymptotes, but it's just to show you what happens when you have a, a different horizontal asymptote, maybe at one half or negative two or something like that. All right. So uh, I hope that helped you out. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions.